Hi everyone, welcome to part B for lecture eight. So in this particular lecture, we're going to be looking at the cognitive inquiry sequence in a little bit more detail. There is an assignment video to go um, to help guide you in your assignment, but this just goes over some important background information on the cognitive inquiry sequence. So in Haas, we are teaching students to think. We want them to think, not just remember everything um, that they need to know about you know, different topics. So teachers and curriculum planners, so planning units of work, need to make thinking skills explicit in a curriculum so students are aware of the skills that they are using. And that's why we're focusing in this third assignment on the cognitive inquiry sequence, because it involves thinking. Students have to think when they are engaged in this inquiry sequence. So teaching of thinking is a form of coaching where skills are focused on specifically and are demonstrated and developed through modeling and practice, which um, you will see um, in the cognitive inquiry sequence. So collaborative learning, students working together is important for teaching thinking, especially because of the role of talk in learning to think. Okay, sharing ideas. Okay, group work is a really good idea. Um, it's not just a technical skill, it's also a disposition. So creating dispositions and habits of good thinking becomes an important task. And because thinking is learned um, as a disposition and also as a skill, okay, so being able to think, um, it's best learned as part of the thinking culture. Now, if we think about um, the general capability uh, of creative, critical and creative thinking. You'll remember the three-dimensional model from the beginning of this unit. Um, and one of the general capabilities is critical and creative thinking. And that's becoming a paramount general capability that will shine through in the cognitive inquiry sequence. So what element of um, aspect of thinking is involved in critical and creative thinking. And as I'm reading this, you'll hear some of the ways in which these different abilities are happening in the cognitive inquiry sequence. So inquiring, so yes, well, they are inquiring in the cognitive inquiry sequence. They are identifying, exploring, organizing information and ideas in that analyze stage, generating ideas, possibilities, and actions, reflecting on their own thinking and processes. Okay, so after the learning sequence, students will be engaged in a couple more activities where they'll actually have to think about their own learning. Um, analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating reasoning procedures. Now, if you look on, on the right side, what does do each of these involve? So inquiring involves um, asking questions. So we're asking questions of our students. Students are asking questions of themselves. Um, identifying and clarifying information and ideas, which is what students are doing in the analyze stage. Organizing and processing information, which they are doing in the analyze and synthesize stages. Um, thinking of possibilities, connecting ideas, which they do with that second but different, different topic um, or situation, uh, considering alternatives and solutions and putting ideas into action. They don't necessarily have to do that in the inquiry sequence, but that is part of generating um, ideas, possibilities and actions in the critical and creative thinking general inquiry. Uh, reflecting on their own processes, um, that goes without saying, saying metacognition, transferring of knowledge into new contexts. And this last one, um, evaluating procedures and outcomes, applying logic and reasoning. So just by reading those out, you can see that the cognitive inquiry sequence really is based on this general capability. A lot of what is a part of this general capability is involved in the inquiry sequence, okay? Now, this is just to take you back to this slide from last week, the social inquiry strategy. Um, this table is presented by Tudbull to basically show a strategy where stu students are inquiring. And I mentioned that a lot of what is pointed out here is uh, relevant and similar to the cognitive inquiry sequence. So in the first instance, you're motivating students to become interested in the topic or maybe checking their prior knowledge. And honestly, this is what we do all the time in teaching. When we're starting a new topic, we want to know what students know about what we're going to be teaching. So, you know, teaching the unit on water, we did a section on water uh, practices, 
uh, management practices in Africa. What do students know about Africa? You know, do they know some of the countries in Northern Africa? What do they know about it? Uh, what cultural practices are, um, you know, used with water in India? Those sorts of things. What do they know? Um, so exploring their perceptions, framing questions for investigation. That's that inquiry question. Okay, that cognitive inquiry, a sequence question. Um, researching this selected issue, so students have to gather information. Okay, it may be from whatever your information source is. So I'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of the cognitive inquiry sequence in a moment. Analyzing sources of data. Okay, and then presenting that information, reflecting on um, one's own learning. Now, you can see there that this is a strategy that's used to help students inquire in a unit of work or in a sequence. And it's very similar to what we're asking you to do here in your third assignment, okay? Um, so I just I really like this figure here. I just think it really breaks down each of the different sections, even though it's not four sections of a sequence, it's kind of broken up a little bit more. And you'll see different, different styles of the inquiry sequence. You'll see, you know, if you're studying science, you'll see it there. I've heard students talk about it in different units. I've mentioned that before, but um, it's really all basically the same thing. Capturing students' interest, getting them to find information, analyze that information and present it to you. It's as simple as that. I mean, students do that in other units as well. Um, we did a similar type of sequence in English, a little bit different though. So if we look at the IGAS um, model, okay? So this is what you're doing for your assignment. So the cognitive inquiry sequence um, that you're learning about now is teaching you how to plan um, to use higher order thinking processes in a unit of work or a sequence of work within a unit. So students will gather information and process that information in a structured way because you've designed the learning activities to develop their own understanding of what you're asking them to understand, to answer the question. Um, so in this unit, we have chosen the cognitive inquiry model for our curriculum units because it refl reflects the practical application of um, inquiry learning and those principles clearly. Now, the initiate stage is a very short stage, okay? And this is where you must present the sequence question to students. Students must know what they're answering. Students are becoming interested in the topic. You've, you've presented something, you've made it relevant to them, um, something like that. They're just gathering enough information to really become appreciative of what the learning sequence is going to involve and what they're going to be learning about and coming to know a little bit better but they really shouldn't be gathering information that they're going to use in the analysis stage. This is really just a brief um, introductory stage. It's just a stimulation stage, really. The gathering stage is a lengthier stage, okay, as well as the analyze stage. But in this stage, students are actually gathering the information. So it needs to be clear that what information source is going to be used. And this is why it's important that you actually have watched the video that you're going to show to students or read the chapter or uh, read the newspaper article because you need to know if students are gonna be able to answer the question. They aren't going to be given any more information after the stage. Once, once the stage is done, they are working with whatever information they have gathered in this stage. They are not going to be doing any more research or anything like that. It's finished after this stage. So the information source that you give to them, that's it, okay? So they're making a record of the information that they need to be able to answer the question. They are not drawing conclusions about anything. They are just getting the information. It's up to you to decide how that you want them to gather the information, what type of learning activity, but you should know what what information is going to be gathered and that they will most certainly be able to answer the question once they've analyzed that information. The analyze stage, so it's not anal analysis, it's the analyze stage. 
so students are actually using the information gathered previously. So you could think of the, if you'd watched the previous lecture, you could think of the mind mapping or the concept mapping, okay, and building on that in your learning activity to help students analyze the information that they've, they've gathered. So students are creating some kind of product um, in this stage, and it's going to display the information for them so that they can actually answer the question. So one of the key things that we'll be looking for is, uh, will students actually be able to answer this question? that has been posed to them at the beginning of the sequence with the information that they have gathered and through the analysis that they have done in that third stage. That's going to be key. And you will have an opportunity in the justification to justify whether or how students will be able to do this. But as you know, each of us have taught in the classroom. So we have experience with teaching these different topics and so forth. So it should be quite clear that students will be able to gather and analyze with the learning activities that you've done. So yes, there will be some sort of product in the analyze stage. You know, it could be a timeline, a graph, some type of use of media. Group activities could be, are often used in this section and that's fine. Group presentations. You're not necessarily assessing students at this stage, although you know you could offer input to help them deepen their analysis. Okay, but really the assessment is coming in the synthesized stage and in the gather stage. You really want to make sure that they are getting enough of, inf of the information that they need to be able to complete the sequence and answer the question. So in the analyze stage, um, the types of activities that students will be engaged in will be identifying different patterns and relationships, okay, with the information that has been gathered in the previous stage, making the patterns and relationships visible with the learning activities and using these, uh, the learning activities that you have designed to illustrate the patterns or relationships, you know, they could present it to the whole class but no other information sources are to be introduced at this stage. One of the common errors in this assignment is that students, I think, must realize by the time they get to the analysis, the analyze stage that students need more information. They're not actually gonna be able to answer the question. So they start introducing more information or asking students to go do more research. That's no, no. The only information are in the two first stages, capturing their interest, and whatever information is needed. The synthesized stage, uh, not synthesis, but synthesize. So we think about what synthesize means. It means to combine different elements or parts. Okay, so that's a dictionary definition. So you're basically students are bringing it all together. You should have a discussion, but it should not be your sole way of assessing students, okay? Because, and I talked about this in the assignment video, some students like myself just didn't like to talk. I was very shy and I felt I was very scared to talk in front of the class. And I don't think a, student, a teacher would have been able to assess me at all because uh, you know a lot of ideas and so forth going through my head, but I didn't wanna share any of them. So you should have discussion where you're bringing ideas together. In fact, you might have discussion in every single stage of this assignment but it cannot be the only product, I suppose, because you need students to be able to demonstrate their arrival at the generalization, okay? And it's so, so that you can assess their learning during the sequence. So lots of teacher questioning and discussion happening. Make sure that you are thinking about what you need students to know and how you wish them to demonstrate the outcome. Now, this is where, why the outcome is so important. You need to make sure that you are constantly thinking about that outcome as you go through the unit and also the skills. I haven't even mentioned the skills yet at all. Um, when you are designing the assessment piece for the synthesized stage, you are thinking about the question that you have asked, how students can best demonstrate the answer to that question. So coming up with that generalization or coming to that conclusion and also the outcome. So do students have to identify? Do they need to examine? What does that look like in geography, in history, in economics, in society and culture? A lot of things to be looking at. So when we are looking at the assessment choice that you have made, have you chosen the right assessment piece for the sequence, for the question that you have asked? 
Okay, and what constitutes the right assessment? Well, if students can show you that they have achieved the outcome through your assessment piece, then that to me, that is a good assessment piece. Okay, and I, again, the justification section is, is key to being able to justify the choices that you make. So remembering that the sequence question is just one question. And we're not having multiple questions, why or why not. Have your how question. I really think that you can't go wrong without a how question because it's asking students to think about processes. And if we're talking about the senior syllabuses, um, we're talking about inquiry, we're talking about higher order thinking, you really do want to have a how question. We don't need to, I mean, we don't need to ask students in an inquiry sequence what, what were the years of such and such war that's you don't need to do an inquiry sequence for that question but if you ask a how question about you know how women were represented in certain time period or whatever then students need to investigate a lot more okay the how questions are the tough ones and that's what an inquiry question is all about getting students to think deeply to be inquisitive to um, use their higher th order thinking processes. Use the how question, okay? One question and that's it. Please remember that, you know, in an inquiry sequence and in your teaching in general, you will always be assessing students. You will always be not just in the um, gather stage or the synthesize stage. You will be assessing students on a daily basis, every single lesson. You will be watching students, seeing where they work best in the classroom, uh, seeing what types of materials they work, be work best with, what skills they need to develop. Are they having a good day? Do they usually perform well? Or in today's just they look a bit tired. Okay, well, maybe we'll just let that go for today because we know that they're having a bit of, they're struggling a little bit. But you are constantly assessing students. So the cognitive inquiry sequence isn't implying that you are assessing only at certain stages. You are assessing all the time. Okay, this is because we focused on assessment in this unit. We need to actually ask you to think about how you could assess students at different points in a sequence. Okay, but assessment is always always happening as a teacher and you will be assessing yourselves as teachers too. Have I, you know, being reflective of your own teaching practices? Have I done what I set to do today? No. Okay. Well, what do I have to do tomorrow in order to get the students where they need to be? Okay. Or yes, I did. So how can we move forward? All right. So that's it for this shorter second half of the lecture. Um, I hope this has helped to bring some understanding on the cognitive inquiry sequence. The one last thing that I will add is that I have said in the assignment video that you don't need to state how long each stage is gonna be. It's just an overview of a learning sequence with de a detailed overview, I should say. We don't need to know that analyze is 74 minutes and the synthesized stage is 63 minutes. We don't need to know that. It's not important, just leave that out. That being said, I also want to add that when you're in the classroom and teaching an inquiry sequence, it's going to flow a lot more naturally to you than how this might seem as you are working on this sequence at the moment. Right now, it's very particular about what's going in each stage. But these are, these are practices that you're going to be doing all the time, whether it's an inquiry sequence or not. You are always going to be trying to get students interested. I've said this so many times before, but I just want to say it one last time. Trying to get students interested. Otherwise, the rest, the rest of your teaching is just going to crumble. We always want them to be interested. We, we, we need them to gather information sometimes. Okay, Sometimes we, need, we provide it to them. Analysis is important. We need them to bring it all together and show you a piece of work. So this is stuff that's happening all the time. You're not going to be standing in front of the classroom thinking, this is the initi initiate stage. Okay, I've done that initiate. Now we're gathering. It's just going to be a natural process that you are going to become familiar with. This is just get introducing you to the cognitive inquiry sequence. Okay, so that's all I want to add there. So I'm hoping this uh, lecture was informative to you. I look forward to reading all of your cognitive inquiry sequences. I am sad that this is the last lecture, but we are still working together 
for a little bit more time as we work through the last assessment. All right, thanks everyone. I hope you have a really great day.